Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, this is episode, episode, it's episodic, I guess, episode 427. And the topic today is, are you looking for love for what you can give or for what you can get? Before I jump into the topic and discussion, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day, for the last year and several months, I do a daily talk on Facebook, where it starts, and then it goes on YouTube, and then on my podcast, I'll tell you about those later. Um, a daily talk on Facebook Live called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, well, today's episode, today's show, today's talk is number 427. And the topic today is, are you looking for love for what you can give or for what you can get? And um, I'm still actually settling in from um, after a really powerful conversation I had earlier. If you haven't, didn't catch my early broadcast because you usually come at 5 o'clock to watch me here live, um, go watch it from earlier in my wall two hours ago at 3 p.m. I did a great, I had a wonderful time talking to my friend Gina and we did a dual broadcast together that was really rich and was a teaching for everybody, I hope. And she gave me some good questions and I gave us a good insight. That was fun. So anyway, back on topic. So welcome to my broadcast. This is me on my own again. Um, this topic is inspired, of course, by other things, situations and scenarios I watched recently. And this one basically came from a place of seeing someone who was, um, I'm going to put it this way, who was, let me just think a little bit like that. There we go. For more of the frame. It was somebody basically who was talking about their experience in a relationship where they were basically used. Where the person who was with them was in it for what they can get out of the person versus what they can give. And if you've watched my broadcast before and you know my talks, I'm very passionate about people adding to the relationship they're in rather than taking away from it, simply put. So when they're in a relationship with other people, their job is to, not their job, wrong, wrong, wrong word, their pr preference, that's a good word, their preference is to share and add to other people and not to a different place of draining. I'll get to that point in a moment too. So my perspective, my invitation, my encouragement, my advice to my clients is look for a relationship where you're both giving to each other. You're both adding to a relationship with one caveat. And the caveat is that you take care of yourself first. So you're not giving and giving and giving and giving until you're drained. You're giving from your overflow, and you're giving in a way that is expiring, additive, and enjoyable for your partner in relationship, and also that you get value from being the contributor as well, because one of the biggest secrets, as it were, is the, um, the benefit of giving, or I mean, the actually the act of service. If we go back to the idea of serving, when you talk about being a partner, one of the greatest, and this one of the things I talked about um, a few days ago, because about my, in my spiritual sense, we talk about how service is the highest form of loving. As you didn't mention, no, that's in private conversation. But anyway, service is described as being it um, as being the highest form of loving. So when you're giving um, to somebody else, you're also getting from them as well. Because the act of giving creates love inside of you, or I should say, increases the love inside of you, which you can then share with other people. In primary relationship. One new way you may want to try looking at your partner is how can you serve them? And I don't mean this in a, in a uh, condescending way or a demeaning way. I mean, how can you serve them in a way that is uplifting, inspiring? Maybe it's being a cheerleader for their dreams, which is a good thing to do anyway. Maybe it's um, making sure that they <clears throat> take care of themselves, that they keep their agreements with honoring their own calendar for their own schedule to do things like going to work out or meditating, to be that encouraging, loving reminder for them to get where they want to go. Because if you're in a relationship with somebody else, it's not just about helping them stay where they are. Ideally, you're in a relationship where you both want to grow and contribute and become better beings yourselves, both them and you. And by giving from your overflow and giving to your partnership, you're in a way contributing to their betterment. And ideally, they're doing the same for you. Relationship, relationship ideally is a two-way street, not a one-way street, because there are relationships out there, in fact, I was reading an article earlier today, <clears throat> where a woman survived an extremely abusive relationship because it was, all, it was all giving one way. He was giving her hell and she got out. 
And that's not what I'm talking about, clearly. I'm talking about when you're giving from your loving and your partner's giving from your loving, you have a very conscious and growth oriented relationship because sometimes relationships do go down that path where your deep seated hidden patterns from when you were a child surface to be dealt with, which means that when you're in a, um, I can say this in a polite way, when you're in a relationship that reminds you of something from your past, and we talked about this on my only, only broadcast um, at three o'clock, we did you tend to repeat cycles that you grew up with. And not necessarily those things that were um, positive. Being in a relationship is, tends to bring up your stuff, as they, as often has been said. But also being in a relationship can bring up your, um, I'll say hidden agenda, that's not what I want to say that, but your unconscious patterns that were driving you in the first place. So the challenge of relationships is that for many people, for many people, relationship is not something they go into consciously. It's going to sound really strange to say that, I know. But a lot of people are in a relationship because they fall into it. And it's kind of interesting to watch people do this. Sometimes kind of depressing as well. But the relationship choices people make often aren't from a place of dis intention, desire, and conscious awareness. They're actually from a place of neediness of wanting to be with somebody. Again, that choice point about giving or receiving or getting. So they focus on what they can get from the partnership, and that's not conscious. In fact, that paradigm for relationship is very limited because what's happening is they're looking to be in a relationship that can um yeah exactly gina yeah this is why why you say go slow yes absolutely because the thing about it and I'll, I'll add to what you said with that point is that it's easy to fall in love with somebody unfortunately sometimes too easy and you can end up being immersed in a relationship way too quickly and realize after you've been in a relationship too long <laughs> that's why all day goes slow yeah exactly and that's the thing, is that being in a relationship is a is an elevating process. That's the way I would put it. And so when you're in a relationship, you're with, you're with somebody who you want to learn more about the closer you get with them. No, I, I got that. Yes, you were typos. Um, again, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on podcasts, podcast, start on Facebook Live with interactive comments. So I'm talking to people you can't see, just so you know. <laughs> um, the challenge of a relationship is that you don't know anything about the person when you meet them. Now, sometimes, and I said this, I did a talk about this last week sometime about friendship first, that being in a relationship is great to get to know somebody before you commit emotionally, sexually, and intimately, so you have a better bearing of what the person's going to be good to be with. Sometimes being with people in relationships jump into relationship sexually first, and then discover afterwards there's no friendship, or they're choosing a partner that's not going to be good for them, that's toxic. So making a choice that is constructive, that is additive, again, from a place of wanting to give, not from what you want to get, because there are many people out there who want to get and take from you. And it's beho beho behooves, that's a fancy word, it behooves you to be wise about your choices. So when you're looking for a relationship, you get clear that that person you want to meet, you're going to take time getting to know them, as Gina was so kind to, met, to say as well. Go slow in the sense that you take your time doing basically what we call your due diligence to really find out what this person's about. Because if you're committing your energy, your sexual energy, and your bodily, bodily fluids and everything else energetically to that partner, you'll be nice to know if that person deserves it. Because, that's why another piece was just dropping in right there. Because, another piece in there, what was that? You have to watch it, sorry, let me, let me qualify something. In my broadcast, they're usually not, well, they're not scripted. They're usually coming from a recent thought and then, I'm, then what comes through after that is flowing. So. Sometimes I get a download that drops in and I don't always have the clarity to articulate it in that moment, so it takes a second. So the piece I was speaking about was committing yourself energetically, physically, sexually, bodily fluids, the whole bit. It's, an, it's a um, <laughs> interesting idea that came up. So okay, let me see that one. It's almost like being an alien abduction. So bear with me as I try to explain where this is coming from. When you commit that quickly to somebody, you're in a relationship with a stranger who could be like an alien, and their desire to get from you is such that you feel violated and you don't feel honored. And if you're getting violated and not feeling honored, those are two big indicators why you should walk away. Because relationships that aren't constructive, additive, and again, giving to each other versus getting from each other, it's not a healthy relationship. And part of that means also that you keep your um, choices self-honoring first 
people may believe that you should be not too selfish because then you're being narcissistic, which is not what's on, by the way. Narcissism, narcissism is not about being selfish in that sense. Narcissism is a whole other conversation. I've talked about that before, and I'll probably do another one soon. It seems to be coming up again. But being selfish in the sense of being self-supportive, self-honoring, means you don't just go to sleep with the next person you meet. In fact, if anything, you keep a very high standard of what you choose to be with because your personal preferences, your personal desires, your personal intentions are such that you will not settle for a relationship unless it meets or exceeds where you are now in your life. And that we talked about before as well. By the way, I'm referencing a broadcast in case you just want to join me late. That was at 3 p.m. I did a dual broadcast with a friend of mine and we went deep into some of this conversation as well. So I'm realizing I'm reiterating some of those points and into this particular topic. But I want to make sure that this point is clear and um, succinct, which is that you have the power in your own hands. You get to decide if you want to contribute to a relationship you're going to be into or take it from a relationship you're going to be into. And be clear and be very aware that if you're taking from that relationship, you're draining the other person. And you're also not filling yourself up because you're using something else. Yes. Sorry, I'm just reading Karen's comment. So you have a history of giving way to giving way too much. Self-honoring is so important. Yes. Energetic grounding and shielding has been essential for you. Yes, absolutely it has. That's why I spoke and I'll come back to that now. Is that if a relationship isn't adding to who you are, making you more powerful, more joyful, more fulfilled, more happy, you may not be in the right relationship. In fact, you won't be in the right relationship. The relationship has to come from a place of fulfillment. You were trying to narcissist, yeah. We talked to, we, um, I, I was talking about something else about that. The thing about narcissistic paradigms, if it's happening repeatedly, get counseling and help to rewire the programming because you've got programming inside that's repeating that stuff drawing in. Just, just let you know. Um, I, I actually had a couple one, two clients who went through that and helped them to um, disengage that, 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 um, I want to say entanglement, but disengage that wiring, that programming. So Edna, if you're still, if that's something you haven't resolved yet, get some help. I can, I offer my own services, but also get work with a therapist or a coach, somebody else who knows this stuff to help you because it's, it's not something that just goes away on its own. Sorry. It's something that basically repeats and repeats until you change the wiring. Um, so getting back to the other point is, yes, they are so damaging. So, all right, since we're talking about narcissists, let me break it down for those people who don't know. A narcissist, the way I can describe it simply, is an energetic vampire. Let that one sit for a second. An energetic vampire being that they are there purely for what they can get. This is an extreme, what do you relation is they're falling in love to get something. Um, so you're saying from me from parents and self-worth, imagine. Um, actually, yes and no, it can come from siblings. It can come from elders and other pe adults around you when you were younger. Um, if it's in the parental family relationship, then th that's the obvious one it comes from. Um, I know uh, one of my clients talks about how her mother was narcissistic, and so she let the wiring from that because the loving she had with her mother was tied into that. And so she kept attraction relationships that mirrored that to her because she hadn't resolved it. So to break down narcissism in a simple way, Energetic vampire means that they are simply there to feed off of you energetically. They're not there to contribute except to get you hooked in. It's almost like a fishing line. A narcissist will, will throw out a uh, will throw out bait with a hook that basically is something that makes you feel very flattered, very complimentary, very taken care of initially. And then when they get you on the line, they pull you in, and you basically get control from that point forward where they suck you dry energetically, where you don't feel supported, you don't feel enabled, in fact you'll feel diminished and depleted because their job is to keep you there so they can feed off of you. <clears throat> and if your self-esteem is strong, you'll walk away. So the more they can control you and diminish you, the more they can keep you. And it's not pretty. So, yeah, exactly. So, if you've been dealing with narcissists, it's not easy to disengage because the, the other problem is narcissists leave scars emotionally. And if you don't get healing to resolve those scars, you don't get support to resolve the wiring, that that doorway still open, and it's so challenging. So yeah, Karen, so you're saying you you're codependently enmeshed with your mother, your narcissistic mother. It's good to know where the where the attraction originated. Yes. So disengaging that wiring, disengaging that programming, and really taking out, it's almost like doing a uh, metaphoric lobotomy of all that programming you got took in with from your mother would change things. That's the real work. And that will free you 
to move on because again like I said if that narcissistic wiring is still in there it's like having a, a, a doorway or a groove embedded in you that still attracts that energetic you, it will not stop until you change the wiring and the good news is it can be changed let me make sure you know that it isn't necessarily pretty that's that's the extreme what you can get from relationship on their part and the problem is when you go in giving they will keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling what you're giving until you're drained then they'll, let you, then they'll let you refill a little bit and drain some more. That's the way it works. It's a very toxic and deconstructive experience. A destructive experience, not deconstructive, destructive. So my, my encouragement to you if you're dealing with that is absolutely get help. Get support, get guidance from somebody, a coach like myself or, or a therapist. Someone who knows enough about the stuff to help you walk free, to help you change the wiring inside of you. It is nothing about them anymore. What they do, what they did do, if you change your own programming, it doesn't stick anymore. It's like you close the door and you heal that part once and for all so that they don't have a way in. And that's the work to do. So, I guess we end up talking about narcissism. Okay, then I guess I'll, put that, I'll update the title. Um, <laughs> that's the way it goes sometimes. You're very welcome, Karen. Yeah, this is, this is a big piece. And I talked about narcissism before on other broadcasts, but I haven't talked about it for a while. But the invitation was here, so I thought I would just do a quick, and this is a very um, Cliff Notes version of what narcissism is about, how it can work, but I want to give you something to think about in case you're dealing with that yourselves. For those of you who are, my heart goes out to you. You're welcome, Edna, and you're welcome, Karen. Um, if you're looking for help and you're stuck, if even it's this area or the area about finding what you really want, I do offer my, my services and I do invite you anytime you watch my broadcast, especially to at least book a discovery session with me. My gift to you, it's a 30 minute conversation. Uh, you can do it by phone, um, if you're local, do it in person. Um, but you go to my website, or you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat. Or if you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, on the left-hand side, click on the Let's Chat button and sign up for this conversation there. You can fill out the form, choose the time, and book a session with me. It's a, it's a gift from me to you. Um, regarding this broadcast, I mentioned at the beginning that if you're wondering why I'm talking to people on the screen you can't see, you're probably watching this on YouTube, or you're watching the replay, or you're listening to this on a podcast. This broadcast is live on Facebook initially, then I put the replay up on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author. I then put it onto YouTube, which is um, Barry Selby's the channel, Message from the Masculine is the playlist. And I eventually, because I'm still doing this slowly, I'm expanding my podcast, which is Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You can search for it there and sign up for my podcast. So you can listen to my broadcasts when you're driving without having to worry about seeing a screen that distracts you. Um, I think they're giving, giving me everything. If this is something you're, deal, you're dealing with and has challenge you with, reach out to me. Don't sit at home and mope. <laughs> get some help, get some assistance. And again, um, for yourself, consider if you're in a relationship now or if you're looking for a relationship, are you more focused on the giving or on the getting? Because this will help clarify a lot of things for you. With that, I think I've summed this up. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow for number 428. Um, topics are always popping in as they come in. And again, if you need help, reach out. Please don't stay home and suffer. If you can get help, it's worth it. Change your life, change your paradigm, heal your heart once and for all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hope don't mope. Yeah, there you go, Karen. Thank you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.